Wow. And to have them say that to you on open night, you know, it's finished, you will be the last, the first and the last in this building, and the first and the last, this will be the last thing the theater ever does. I've had a few of those experiences with the factory, you know, kind of that experience that's about right. what it's like. That's right. It's like... Uh, when Ken came back, Ken he came back it up and said, you know, we're dying here, and <laughs> out comes the series, and... He said, yeah, well, I, well he's house still in Vancouver, and he said, uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to do all six of these plays and, and in the same year, and I, in the first season, I said, you know, Ken, I'd rather sleep with snakes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the idea of doing that makes me sick to my stomach. You want me to come back to and do all these plays? He said, yeah, well, do three at the beginning of the season, three at the end, and uh, that would be okay. I said, I just, uh, you know, because I never thought of doing them. I was writing them, so it's such a good time. Right. Now you got to do them. Wait a minute. You resisted the idea because you didn't, you didn't see yourself as writing all six? No, I'd already written them. As a programming idea, it wasn't wise. I just didn't want to do it. That's too scared. It was just weird. Then I thought, you know, okay. Having had the history with... I mean, it's Terry... I did opening six plays in one season? That's it. Like, I had I yes. six I'm plays sorry. in one season. And then he opened them again in the fall. He went back to book. So I had nine opening nights. you got a guy who's, okay. who freaks out at openings, right? Yes, okay. Doesn't like them. I had nine of them. Nine sets of reviews. <laughs> Over and over again, I reviewed, I reviewed, reviewed, and you know, I said, do you have to keep coming and having them come back and review them again? They've already reviewed them. They've already said they like them. Can we just think we got away with murder and just leave them alone? We had to do that. So no, and then but I said to myself, okay, he's going to do this. He's come back. He's put his own money into theater. And you deal with someone like Ken or all those guys that found you. Either get on board or you get out of the way. You know, you don't question it. You go, look, okay, he wants to do this. Right. God knows why, uh, but okay, I'm here. We'll do it. And uh, my mother was dying at the time. I remember leaving rehearsals during Problem Child. My mother was dying. I had to go to the hospital. It was just awful. But it was great in other ways. I had great actors. Everyone was enthusiastic. Actors who loved each other, who were supportive, all the stuff, the building. And was the turning point in, in the History Factory Theater? Yeah, well, it came back. You know, I wouldn't have thought it. You know, he could literally, when I went in there, uh, got back from Vancouver, where we'd been for the year. I was finished writing them. And I went to the theater. There was nothing in there. He had brought three or four students from U of T where he'd been teaching graduates, he just graduated, and they were there. Uh, no one else was there. It was empty. It was like a mausoleum. I didn't know where all the actors' resumes were. I, you know, I didn't know where the things were. I didn't, uh, where, where had they gone? Where was the resources? Is there any power in the building? What's going on, you know? So then they go, well... But then, you, you know, you bring in people like Sean Kerwin, who was, came to work the factory up on Dubon when she was 17. That long history, you know? Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to her, we got to do this again. <laughs> remember it was like up on DuPont Street? It's worse here, <laughs> and we're much older. <laughs> we got to do this again. And Peter Freund, same thing, you know? All that stuff. So it was all that, it was just like putting that together. And that's fine if you're doing it in a garage, you're doing it somewhere, but then, you know, the world is going to come in, and they don't care, you know, what you didn't have to do this with and what you had to do, and poor Sean working on no budget, no put that set together and the costumes and everything, just like work like a dog. I didn't see anyone work so hard to do that. So did you read reviews? Yeah, I read them, you know, at that time. I mean, because in that time I read them because it was really, really important that they went well. Right. That's another thing. It's not like you do a show and you go, okay, well, they didn't like this as much as they liked some other way, whatever, but this one's like... And when a reviewer kicks you in the side of the head, what's that like for you? It's less and less uh, a really? deal. In fact, I think probably now I go, well, you're probably right, I fucked up, or whatever, or, or this happened, or maybe it's, you know, opening nights, as you know, it can go any number of ways. And in my sense, it can actually kind of go a little haywire sometimes, because it's, right. they're pitched in such a way. So I'm, I know I'm okay with it. I, I, uh, I just like less and less, it's like, you know, if it stings, it stings very, for a very short time, and if it's, if it's great, it, it makes it it's elating for just a very short time, too. It's not, either way, I don't. Doesn't mean anything that much to me. When you were starting out, oh, it's devastating. Because you, for me, it would be like uh, I'm very. I don't belong here anyway. I don't know anything about theater. I don't come from any kind of background that knows anything about theater. I'm sort of an imposter. I have no. I have no. Um, well, I just. I, I'm not on for ground, and I don't seem to be doing it like anyone else. I'm just making stuff up, and apparently from what I'm getting, from reading this stuff, there's a right way to do this, and I'm not doing it. You know, I thought it was just, you know, and then, like, 
I've told so you're so. an outsider who wrote about outsiders <laughs> trying to get into the inside of the theater. Just do it. And you and did. When, and, 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 and not and only going to the inside, you went right to the center of the inside of Canadian writing. Well, and then I remember, you know, people... Yeah, just, it, it's like you say, they just had to get used to the voice, I think. I had to get used to the voice, I had to get really behind the voice. Well, more. I mean, that's when the writers, and I don't want to go back to television again, but they're linked. It, you know, fiction writing, non-fiction writing, television writing, film writing, theater writing, mm -hmm. it's all linked. Totally. It is, do we want to hear who we are, or do we want to hear a concoction? that serves someone's agenda. And when you only want to hear a concoction that serves somebody's agenda, you might as well take the plug out of the bathtub and the water's gone. I, I totally mean, believe that. I, and and I then we'll never grow up. We'll and never, never grow, grow up. up. I, mean, I mean, we might as well talk about it because a lot of your plays have violence in them and they have comedy and they have tragedy in them. And we're talking, you know, three days after whatever mm -hmm. a number of school children were killed in the United States. And often I look at that and I look at a culture that has no narrative for defeat, and they have no narrative for tragedy. Mm -hmm. They don't play those narratives. Either, well, Mama does a bit, but they don't really play them on the theater, they don't play them on television, they don't play them on film. So they don't have a narrative in their set of cars for defeat and for tragedy. No, the American, no, no, no. apart from, you know, death of a salesman, they don't have those narratives. So here comes those deaths, deaths of those children, and how do you deal with it, apart from sentiment and putting it in false places? So again, the writer and the writer's voice, and what George Walker does, is he walks onto the scene from the outsider, and he's from the outside, and he says, I want this part of Canada heard. And he succeeds, and actually changes us, and changes, and then the world wants to see the plays. But that's why the conversation, for me, is, goes back to the writing, and what do you say to the young writer, who's then told, in the interview with the artistic director, or the executive director, no, this way. You have to think of you, and that's as my, this is what I benefited from, that you're part of something bigger. You know? And I felt, and that's what comforted me, and that's what surrounded me, because I was part of that foundation, that founding of things. I was part of something bigger. Uh, and so that really made a lot, meant a lot. I never really lost that. I'm part of something bigger. You know? And that part of something bigger is making this country grow up, Take, you know, do everything it can be. You know? Bring in more people. Be a bigger hearted. You know, be more adventurous. Be like you say. Be afraid and be, be and say that you're afraid and show these people. But I had that. I was surrounded. I don't know now because I never want to say what the flip side of those people always having had the theater that maybe they don't feel that they're that. Maybe that's the thing that they don't have. That they're part of something bigger. Getting. I would never have imagined anyone from my peer group being able to do what was done at the factory, for example. What to take over Ken's job when he was fired like that. I would imagine that's impossible to do. I, emotionally impossible to just step into that. And people say, well, they, those two people stepped into it to save the theater. I say, that's naive nonsense. They stepped into it because they're opportunistic and they have their careers in mind. And maybe they have families and maybe that's an important thing, but that's not because they didn't step in to save the theater. I know what happens when someone steps in to save the theater. They do it at their own expense, and they do it by putting their life, you know, their domestic or also like in jeopardy. It, they don't take it because it's a great job, and they're going to have power. I know the difference, and that, and that's why I was able to kind of go, and that's why when I go into these meetings, I'm surrounded by brave people, you know, who I've dealt with, you know, who came up with me, and all these people, like yourself, and everyone else who's had to do this. That's not. I'm not coming from some naive place. I'm willing to say that to them. Right. And, and, and eventually you think, well, it's got to dawn on them that there's probably a, a way to do this. You know, there's, there, the country has to grow up culturally, it has to be independent, it has to tell all the stories it possibly can, and it can't be afraid, especially in, in mass media, you know, where you can reach lots and lots of people. You don't want to, like, uh, just be timid about it. You want to move out there, move out there. So I... I would love, someone said to me, uh, Bruce McDonald's done some certain amount of work with us, and he once said to a network, he's wanted to just give George and his partner Danny some money and let them do what they want. <laughs> well, how did you go wrong? He said, they're just so different, they just would do something interesting. Why don't you just do that? And he went, no, that's not what we do. <laughs> we don't just give some people some money to do what they want to do. And I'll never have the kind of power to do that, you know? So you have to kind of find a way in through the back door. I mean, there's a lot of people who try and help, you know, get things on. And, but still, you know, I'll never have that. So, so like, like uh, to take, 
like someone's famous, you know, like HBO gets the cream now. They can just anyone goes in. Gus Van Sant does stuff, you know. He, you know, they go. They just. But I'm never gonna have that. But that's your dream. Go. Just give me one shot. Just, count it just, just want to do it, you know. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and I'm used to saying things. How bad can it be? <laughs> that's how you reduce to. It. You don't say. I, I think I can reach some people you haven't reached yet. You know, so I, I don't know. But he can't give up because it's too, the audience is too big. There's too many people you could actually try to reach, you know. And it's like, uh, when I saw people coming to my plays that um, I never expected to see there, you know. I mean, just from everywhere, from the deep suburbs, it's coming, coming, you know. Like, I said to someone, like, how did I get popular? I would be the last one of that group of writers to start writing, like, this is the guy that's going to get large, fairly large audiences for his work. And they would go, hmm, the, the crazy guy? <laughs> <laughs> the crazy guy's going to get on. So like, what's going on here? And someone said, well, it's just that you don't, it's just that they're so exposed. There's nothing, they're simple in a, a way. They're, they're, they're accessible. They're not, like, they're not sucky, but they're accessible, you know. So it, it, they should reach everyone. And so all I had to say was, let them run long enough so they can reach everyone. But they don't reach past Winnipeg. No, they don't get back to Winnipeg. Well, I, I, well, they won't go to... It's okay, you know, I'm finding all sorts of new, younger audiences. It's great, you know, because when I do get done in Winnipeg, it's usually in the fringe by young audience. Young, young... That's what's great, especially with Suburban Motel, because they're cheap to do. In Vancouver, during the Vancouver, last Vancouver Festival, they did all six in a, in a hotel, an actual hotel, that only sat 17. And they were in the room. The audience was in the room with these people. And uh, I didn't see it, but apparently it was amazing. You just sat there, you gained it. Now the actors can't escape, but they, uh, they can't escape <laughs> either. So they're locked in this room, 17 people. And they did them all. They did them in rep, they did sometimes three a day, sometimes two days, and they did them for the whole festival. And then they extended it, because they, I mean, they didn't have a lot of seats to sell, but they sold them all, because they could.